Regan Smith drove for uh, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated last year with the merger and contraction of that team folding into the Ganassi organization left without a ride and picked up the 78 that Joe Nemechek had driven the year before Travis Quapel uh, would have been in the top 35 but uh, the Yates racing team used that spot for Bobby Labonte so Quapel having to time his way in I'll tell you car I'm going to watch closely is that 42 car Juan Pablo Montoya starting in the third spot his two teammates in the first duel Eric Almirola Martin Trex Jr. both had strong runs again this is a product of the Dale Earnhardt Incorporated Chip Ganassi with Felix Sabatis merger and uh, Montoya has been fast all week in here and runs good at the restrictor plate race I'm just having a problem we have talked about drivers and who can win and who's going to do good and I don't know if we mentioned Dale Jr. for two days. We will. I think you're right. <laughs> if we don't, the fans will let us know about it when he takes the lead, I'll guarantee you. I think he'll surprise you in this little race. He's looking over at Montoya from our Bank of America onboard camera. Montoya last year in a Dodge. This year they switched to Chevrolet as part of that merger with DEI. Mark Martin, age 50. Travis Quapple. Arkansas versus Wisconsin on the front row. Green flag for round two of the Gatorade Duel in Daytona. Very nice start, uh, nice and even. Both cars kind of took off at the same time. Looks like they're going to hit turn one side by side. I said hit turn one, not each other. <laughs> they were bad. Looked like they were about ready to bam in each other. <laughs> that was a little close for comfort. <laughs> it was. Now they spread out a bit. I think Zero. Junior to the high side right away. With Kyle Bush in that 18 car, pushing him all the way down into turn three. I'd be surprised if David Rudiman in that double zero car didn't get up there and race pretty well too. That car is running well. Boy, Quapple's car is a bit loose. Well, it, and Dale Jr. will lead lap one. And Junior Nation comes to life. So many people on a race team, so important on race day, but when you're restrictor plate racing and you're running in packs like this, probably the most important person, that spotter that we just heard right there on top of the grandstands. Yeah, and, and you got to feel pretty confident if you're Dale Jr. here because the Hendrick cars overall, uh, if you consider Stewart and, and Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson and the whole crowd, they've all been running really, really well. Front five, single file, and David Rudiman peeks out in the trioval. Here he comes on the outside in his Toyota. Yeah, he needs some help. He got out there, but uh, he's going to pay the price. Nobody go, went with him. He's going to back. He's going to fall back a little bit. You got to have a little help when you go to the outside like that. Looks like help's on the way, Daryl. I'm just not sure they're going to get there in time. Clint Boyer in that 33 car, bringing Sadler in the 19. Trying to get Rudiman into the double zero, push down the back stretch. You feel like Superman with a supercharger when you get a run on a guy, but you jump out there and it's like hitting the wall. She says, whoops. Right with Denny Hamlin, that's Bobby Labonte just in front of Hamlin in the Ask.com Ford. Pretty much when you're on fresh tires like the start of these races, uh, the bottom groove is going to be the way to go. You're going to hang around the bottom for a while. Might move up after the tires give out a little bit. Front seven single file, rookie Scott Speed alongside Rudiman in that second pack. And well, they were single, they were single file. <laughs> for a moment. When I started to say that, they were. Mark Martin in the five car, pole sitter, gets a little help from Montoya in that 42 car. They go to the outside. We have definitely seen where all it takes is two cars hooked up, and you can go. Yeah, you got to have some help. Get somebody to go with you that can help you, push you, and you can make some passes. Speaking of pushing, Denny Hamlin gives a... Bobby Labonte right there, a little push going down the back straightaway. Teammates side by side through turn four. Mark Martin comes around the outside in the Kellogg's five to take the lead from Junior. Can Junior get it back at the line? He does. Dale Junior led the third lap. Oh, we hit cars a little bit squirrely back in the back part of that pack right there. Regan Smith uh, stuck in the middle. And Scott Speed now drops to the bottom.
saw a couple of cars back in the pack getting really knocked around. Yeah, buffed was, around. One was the 99. Whoa. Oh, boy, Mark Martin got a shot from Montoya there. Boy, uh, Mark said, now, wait a minute. It's early, now, boys. You want it? Clear all around, side by side behind you. Clear by two to the bottom. This is when you start saying, when you're Mark Martin, you're on the front row locked into the race. This is when you second guess your strategy. Whoa, if these guys are going to race like this, I might want to rethink my position. Let's see what the 99 back here in the pack. Watch the 99, Carl Edwards. Right down Whoa, here, there's Carl. Boy. He got a pretty good nerve from uh, Jeff Burton in the 31 car. Let's see what Carl, uh, what kind of reaction he has here. No help with you on the bottom here. Down there by yourself. Here comes some help. Three wide. 31's helping you. You're still three. Here's a shot from the 31. Man, that duck got his feathers <laughs> ruffled. Still I'm going to tell you right now, get me another spotter if he thinks that's helping me. <laughs> that was a little more help than he wanted. Nah, it's more than I needed. <laughs> Montoya gave Junior a push, and Dale Junior back to the bottom, back to the lead. Now he's got his teammate Mark Martin in that five car tucked up behind him. Looks like the outside line will prevail. Denny Hamlin in the 11 trying to bring the bottom along. One of the big movers has been Brian Vickers in that 83 car. Started back in 16th up there in the sixth spot. See, one of the things I think they learned from the first race, you can make a pass. It's okay to go ahead and make that pass. And you can get it back if you're the guy that uh, just got passed. So I think they're feeling pretty confident about these cars. I tell you who's feeling confident. We talked to him. Daryl talked to him right before the green flag. Kevin Harvick started way back in the 22nd position. He's just cracked the top 10 in that 29 car. Well, just imagine this. If you can get a good draft off of one or two cars, how many can you get off of 25 or 30? Transfer spots. Travis Quapple. Regan Smith was in the second transfer spot in that 78. Boris said is now right in front of Regan Smith. At 08, that's Boris said. And that is the battle for the bubble right there. And look at A.J. Allmendinger in that 44 car. That's all of them right there together in a wide. And when you see those cars kind of just weaving around a little bit, the driver is holding the steering wheel straight. That's the wind buffing that car around and making it wiggle like that. And Mike, we felt like he would be a factor. You saw Mike Wallace in that 71 car. Maybe he didn't have a fast race car, but Mike Wallace really runs good in the draft. He's trying to get up there and race his way into the 500. Mike's just got a knack for hanging around the just right spot to get himself into these 500s. He's done it a couple of times. And right now he is fifth among the cars trying to race their way in. And the order of those cars will be seen up at the top of your screen on the crawl. There's a look at Wallace. Green, there's Boris said with Green behind his position number and Quaffle. Right now, they're in the race in positions. Almondinger behind his 18th place indicator. It's yellow. That means he's got to go. Unlike the first race, we've got seven go or go homers racing together in a wad, all the way from Boris said back to Kelly Byers there in the 51 car. Well, there's not a Petty in the race this year, but there's a car that certainly is very reminiscent of the Petty era. Kyle Petty in that 44 car, A.J. Almondinger. That's a retro paint job from the past. Looks like the uh, Dodge Magnum that Kyle brought here at age 18 to race in the arc of 200 which he won his first ever start now Kyle would like to be here he does not have a ride and as you said Daryl it's the first time since 1965 there is no driver named Petty trying to make the race meanwhile back at the ranch Dale Jr. still leads him around here nine laps in the books 51 laps to go at Daytona.